fine this result is forms the basis of the statement that you would be listening very often in your chap textbook of uh, thermodynamics and your teacher would be saying very often this is statement while he'll be teaching you thermodynamics that entropy of universe is continuously increasing and that thing comes from here look this k2 by t2 is a change in entropy as we have know now that clausius defined entropy like this q by t now q2 by t2 is entropy q1 by t1 is also entropy q2 is the entropy that uh, sink is uh, having q2 fine this is the engine and this is a process now this is t1 higher temperature and this is t2 lower temperature fine if you look at the whole thing as a system then t1 lost some energy lost some heat gave it to this engine fine the energy the, the heat lost by this t1 is equal to q1 by t1 so the entropy lost is equal to q1 by t1 so q1 by t1 is the entropy lost by the source and this sink gained energy in the form of heat as q2 so q2 by t2 is entropy and q2 by t2 is the energy or the entropy q2 by t2 is the entropy gained by the source sink sorry so q1 by t1 is the entropy lost by the source q2 by t2 is the entropy gained by the sink so this this q1 by t2 t1 is signifying entropy lost this q2 by t2 is signifying entropy gained fine so that the whole change in entropy of the whole system will be entropy gained minus entropy lost so this q2 by t2 is entropy gained and q1 by t1 is entropy lost so total entropy delta s is equal to q2 by t2 minus q1 by t1 and from the above equation in in inequality we can see that this q2 by t t2 minus q1 by t1 is greater than 0 here it is delta s for real processes will be greater than 0 this we can come uh, to know from the analysis of carnot cycle and using the fact that entrop that of using carnot theorem that the efficiency of a real engine will be lesser than that of efficiency of carnot heat engine so using that fact i come to know that entropy of that real heat engine is greater than zero if i take the whole system because engine involves source and six as well the whole system the entropy of the whole system is going to be greater than zero so real engine involves real processes now if you are dealing with any real process then entropy must increase in that process this is the thing from where that statement comes a delta s of a spontaneous process must be greater than 0 fine and from here i have defined s so this quantity integral dq reversible by t this must be greater than 0 that's the bottom line and that's how we finished whatever we started we started to hunt a physical quantity that will tell me whether the process is spontaneous or not and here we are to our destination this delta s is a physical quantity this s is a physical quantity and change in this physical quantity if that is positive then the process is spontaneous if that is not positive then the process is not spontaneous fine fine so now we have established that s is this and for any spontaneous process delta s has to be greater than 0 by using two you have to solve many numerical problems because whatever we have discussed that was for understanding once we have understood these two things that entropy is defined like this and for any spontaneous process entropy change in entropy has to be greater than 0 now these two are our tools to analyze any process for any process using this definition will 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 find out i'm sorry this integral ds is change in s not s so integral will 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 find out change in entropy using this equation and if that change in entropy is greater than 0 we will we will submit 
that the given process is spontaneous. If that is not greater than zero, we will submit that the given process is not spontaneous. So these are the final two results that you have to remember in this chapter. Uh, in this topic uh, of second law of thermodynamics. Now using these two results, you have to solve various problems because at the end of the day, you have to solve numericals in your exam. So, so we have developed a very good understanding of thermodynamics second law and I hope I have convinced you that this holds and this holds. Now using these two, let's proceed ahead and let's see what they will give you an exam. Now, for the first uh, uh, job is uh, to look into simpler system and then see and then calculate the entropy chain in that those systems and uh, and 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 see the validity of the expressions that we have established. Of course, they are valid because we have seen the mathematical proof as well, and we'll basically try to learn to apply those formulas. Basically, a single formula we have studied. So we have to learn to apply that formula. Let's start with simple case. Let's start uh, with idle gas because idle gas is simple because idle gas equation is simple. So analysis of idle gas is easy. So let's begin with idle gas. Now we have the theory is over. We have known two facts. We have known the definition of entropy. We have also known that if change in entropy is positive, then the process is spontaneous. Now that's the theory of thermodynamic second law. Let's start using that theory to apply and solve that, apply that theory in solving certain problems. So, uh, suppose I have an idle gas inside a chamber. The volume is constant. It won't change. And considering the CV also to be constant, CV is a have is, is, is a weak function of temperature so actually when you when you increase the temperature then cv tends to change but for a uh, small variation in temperature it's a good approximation that we consider cv to be constant now when we are heating it suppose i'm adding certain amount of heat into it then the question is find out the entropy change that will occur in this idle gas because of because of the heat that we are providing from outside Suppose I have added Q, fine, and the temperature initially is T naught, and later it changed to T or T final. Suppose, so if t this information is given to you, now you ha you have been asked what is the change in entropy of the system. Now, whenever you hear of entropy, you always start from here. Ds is equal to dQ reversible by T, fine. You always and always start from here because this is the only formula that we have studied up till now and somehow you have to use this. So this is the definition of entropy. Now if they, if they are asking the net change in entropy, we have to integrate this small changes so we will get the net change. So delta S will be integral ds, integration of these small changes and integration of dq by t. Now dq has to be reversible. That means I have to carry out this process reversibly. And we have understood the notion of reversibility and irreversibility. I made that crystal clear initially in the first law of thermodynamics. 